Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. You are watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden, brought to you by the Mega Light Mission. This devotion comes to you from the daily devotional called The Emancipator. The Emancipator is a devotional that brings you truth that will usher you into the good life experience. Call to subscribe to your monthly copies. You can also visit our website at www.megalightmission.com for free downloads of The Emancipator. You are welcome to today's episode of The Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. The Good Life Devotion is brought to you by the Megalite Mission. We have fellowships and cells all over the city of Accra, Ghana, and around the world. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call any of the numbers displayed on your screen and join our life transforming services. You can also log on to www.megalitemission.com and subscribe to teachings and other ministry materials by Dr. David Bendan and receive the latest updates on our programs and services. Get ready for your transformation in your life as you grab your Bible, notebook and pen to receive God's word for today. The second code in this six part um, series is who is a sinner? This is a second code of sin. The second sin code is who is a sinner? And our main scripture is Romans chapter 5, verse 19. We read it while we're discussing the previous code. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. And it says, For us by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. For us by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We are trying to answer the question, who is a sinner? And again, Never assume you understand anything until you have read it in the Bible. Make sure that all the things you say you know concerning your work in Christ are according to the Bible's definition. The reason is because there are a lot of people who have added their own definitions to what the Bible says. And because it either looks like the Bible... It may be easily taken. You know, deception, when somebody wants to deceive another person, he doesn't come totally from the opposite side. He comes in as though he's on, on the line of what is right. And then someone who's not able to differentiate the reality from the fine details of mis uh, I mean, deception gets deceived. This is why the Bible says that the devil parades himself as an angel of light. This devil man is a wicked man. Why won't he be black? But he parades himself as an angel of light because angels of God are bright. So that you wouldn't be able to separate between him and the angels of God. Usually, the stone that you will easily knock your foot against and fall down is not a very obvious stone. It's a big stone line that everybody will see it and pass by it. 
And that is how deceptions come. So usually people's ideologies come into biblical things when they push in something little here or something there. That is not totally biblical. And that is why you must be sure that you have read something in the Bible to be sure that you are saying that that is what it is. So for instance, who is a sinner? It's a code you must unravel to be able to understand how to deal with sin. And the scripture said, as through one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. What is the meaning of this scripture? Or what can we learn from this scripture? If you look at the scripture, it says that, for by one man's disobedience, many were made. Many were made sinners. He didn't say that many were considered to be sinners. You see, they were made sinners. They were not just referred to as sinners. They were actually established as sinners in their nature. That is a Greek word used there for the maid. That means that to become or to establish as the primary constitution of a thing. So what the Bible was saying here is that by one man's disobedience, and we're talking about Adam here, by one man's disobedience, many became established in life as sinners by nature. And what that means is that they were sinners by nature. Now, who is a sinner? This simply tells you that a sinner is a person with the nature of sin in his spirit. That is a sinner. So if you look at somebody stealing, somebody fornicating, somebody fighting, and because of that you call him a sinner, you may, you, 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 you are, th th that definition is not very right. The reason why he is doing what he's doing is because he's a sinner. What he's committing that you are seeing is not what makes him a sinner. The sin inside him is what makes him a sinner. He is doing what he's doing because he's a sinner inside. That's what God said. You shall know them by their fruit. So the fruit is only the external sign by which you know the tree. Are you following? And this is why on, this, on the other side, you cannot know a righteous man by looking at the works he does. That somebody doesn't steal, doesn't kill, doesn't fornicate, doesn't make him righteous. Are you following? And in the same way, that maybe somebody is also doing the thing that are uh, acts of sin does not mean that he is a sinner. That is why you need to know what the Bible says. Who is a sinner? He's somebody with the nature of sin in his spirit. So Romans 5 19 says that by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Many became established as sinners as their primary constitution by one man's disobedience. So who is a sinner? One with the nature of sin in his or her spirit. This is a sinner. Now, I want to explain this for you to understand why everyone who has come into this world, born by a man and a woman, is a sinner. You see, everyone is born a sinner because of this definition. Because as I explained in the first quote, for the one who hasn't believed in Christ, sin is a state. And sin is a nature. And then sin is an act of sin committed. Now, if you take the first meaning of sin, which is a state, everyone is born a sinner because he or she is born in a state of sin. So being born in a state of sin makes him a sinner. Let's take our Bible scripture to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And let's all go to the fifth verse. In other words, Psalm 51, verse 5. And it says that, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. <laughs> Some modern versions will tell you that in sin was I conceived and in sin was I born. 
So before a baby is pushed out, the environment in which he or she is conceived is the environment of sin. It's a state of sin. That natural human reproduction law has since the time of Adam been, been progressing in the region of sin. So everyone is born a sinner because he was conceived and born in the state of sin. Are you following? We are trying to paint a picture to you from the scriptures who a sinner really is. And it is important to understand that every human being can be traced to the man Adam and his wife Eve. Whether they are whites or blacks, yellows or whatever, every human being is traceable to one blood. So there are some people who try to say, no, how can the sin of Adam affect me? Okay, be there. Unless a woman didn't give birth to you, you can be traced to Adam. And that principle of the sin nature being transmitted as the life of the natural reproduction process, you cannot negotiate it. So we go to Acts chapter 17 and see something very powerful there. Acts chapter 17, and we cannot read the 26th verse. The Bible says that it was talking about God in the previous verse, who doesn't uh, need anything from anybody. Then he said in verse 26, And hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That means that where you were born, God is aware of. But the key thing we want to look at here is that he has made of one blood all nations of men. So whether they are in America, they are in Asia, Japan, wherever they are, every man can be traced to one blood. That is Abraham and his wife. Are you following? So that's what I would say that if you go to uh, Romans, if you go to Romans chapter 5, Verse 12, look at it. It says, For us by, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So death passed upon how many men? All men. Why? Because by one man sin entered the world, and death followed sin, and sin spread unto all men. Praise the Lord. Hello, I'm Pastor Sharon Mensah of the World Reinstatement Movement, also known as the Mega Light Mission. Do you know that if you are born again, you have the very life of God in you, and as such, you have liberty in Christ? John chapter 8 verse 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8 verse 32, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What then is the truth? John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. The truth of God's word is what the Holy Spirit expounds to us through Dr. David and Mrs. Cindy Bindan in the day devotional called The Emancipator. The Emancipator is a day devotional published in monthly editions. It brings to you the truth of God's word, which will equip and enable you to exhibit this divine life, which is the good life of righteousness, peace, joy, victory, divine guidance, divine health, and prosperity. There have been many testimonies of growth in the world, healings and victories by all who have used the Emancipator. You can be the next person to share your testimony. Order your copy of this month's Emancipator now. You can also visit our website, 
megalightmission.com to download your free copy either in English or in French. Keep on watching The Good Life Devotion with Dr. Bendan on this channel. Life is good. Enjoy. Are you so burdened with sin consciousness that you are wondering whether you can fully please God? Is there a particular act of sin in your life that you seem not to be able to overcome? Do you seek to have a definite understanding of your righteousness in Christ and forever live as a master of a sin? Good news! Dr. David Binden's best-selling book, Master of a Sin, is a must read. Call the following numbers now for your copies. 264 327106 or 0541097651. Hallelujah. Wow. So we just made it clear that a sinner is one with the nature of sin in his spirit. And you should get it that every human being was born a sinner because he was born in that state of offense. Just in sin did my mother conceive me and in sin did my mother give birth to me. And everyone can be traced to one blood. So that nature of sin was passed on. Now listen to this. Irrespective of how nice, primed and proper, Gentle or cultured, any human being is. He or she is still a sinner because he or she is born with the sin nature. This thing must sink deep into you. That somebody is well educated and speaks good English <laughs> doesn't mean he's not a sinner. That doesn't make him righteous. That somebody is very beautiful and very nicely dressed doesn't mean that that makes him righteous. He's still a sinner without Christ. That somebody is a very eloquent politician, lives in a very big house, maybe the best place in town, East Lagoon or somewhere, Trasaco, if you're in Accra, doesn't mean anything to his spiritual state. That if someone is a bank manager, always wearing a suit with a tie and a, a nice jacket and all that, doesn't mean that he's not a sinner. A lot of people are quick to try to classify people based on their appearances. <laughs> but sin is a nature in the spirit of a person. And a sinner is a person who has this nature in him. He may be educated, but he's an educated sinner. He may be a politician, but he's a, he's a, he's a political sinner. He may be a banker, but he's a, he's a, manage, a, a sinful manager. He may be a, a beautiful lady, but he's a sinful beauty. It doesn't matter what he does. He may be a famous person, but he's a sinner who is famous. As long as the life he has in him is the life he got from his mom and dad, he is a big time sinner. And even if he does not commit some of the external things that you may consider sin, he is still a sinner by nature. Are you following? Okay. We have uh, 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 dogs that bark. If a dog is in your house and for the past three months it hasn't barked, does he not make it a dog? It does not necessarily need to bark to be a dog. It's a dog by nature. And it's only a matter of time and it will bark by all means. That is why a, a sinner can try. No, sometimes they say, you know, as for me, I don't fornicate, I don't drink, I don't do what. Do you know what is in the spirit? Sin is not just what you see on the outside. Sin is in nature. And that's why there are some people in certain religions that are misled. They think that as long as they are not fighting with people, as long as they don't hate anybody, as long as they are not cheating anyone, they think that by just being nice, they are out of it. And they think that that could even save them one day. You better be born again. Until by the second birth, the spirit gets rid of this sin nature. One remains a sinner for life. So you were born into the state of sin, and the sin nature was passed into your spirit. And until you get born again, 
in the process that, in which process the Holy Spirit expunges the sin nature out of your spirit and replaces it with the life of God, you will forever be a sinner. And this is why a person who doesn't get born again cannot negotiate going to hell because all sinners have a perpetual place made up for them and their chief is the devil. And hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And all those who refuse the salvation in Christ will spend eternity with him. But if you are watching me, at this time, you cannot and you should not go into hell because there's an opportunity for you to receive Jesus. And to be able to intercept the path of a sinner and redirect him into eternal kingdom with God is the reason why Jesus Christ came. This is why Jesus didn't mean words when he said, you must be born again. Why? You have been born, but that birth came with a life that was passed on to you from the seed of Adam, the one blood. And that nature is sin. And without even doing anything, you are sin a sinner. But Jesus said, I, you must be born again. In other words, you must receive a new life. And this new life is not received by changing your ways, by repenting. It is received by being born again. And the scriptures have shown us how. Born again is not, I was sinning and I no more sin. I was fornicating and I no more fornicate. I was drinking and I no more drink. This is also another deception. You see somebody say, oh, no, 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 I'm born again. You know, maybe boys, boys are working together. Then one of them, they, all, they were all having five girlfriends. And now one of them is only having only one. Then he says, oh, you know, me, I'm, now I'm born again. I'm only with one lady and I'm planning to marry her. A joker. A joker. That's not born again. Born again means you've been incubated through the gospel of Jesus. In the womb of the Holy Ghost. That's what Tattoo 35 means. You have, you have been washed by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Meaning that you have received the gospel of Jesus. You have believed with all your heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confessed him as the Lord of your life. That is what gets you born again. Hallelujah. So, it's important to understand who a sinner is. And I believe that has been clear to you. Who is a sinner is the second code of sin. That if you don't unravel, you cannot live about sin. You must know that a sinner is that person that was born by a man and a woman. Because he was born into a state of sin. And the nature of sin was passed on from Adam. And it's a nature in his spirit. So whether he does the external acts, he commits the external acts of sin or not. By just being born by a man and a woman makes him a sinner. So a sinner is a person. That has the nature of sin in his spirit. What he does outside is the result of the internal nature. That is why a mango only produces a mango. So a sinner cannot live otherwise but to sin. That is why any preaching of the gospel that tells you repent and come to Jesus is a law. It can never produce results. Because the sinner cannot stop sinning. His nature is sin. He may stop a few days of fornication, but that doesn't make him a, 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 not a sinner. You can only come out of being a sinner by getting the sin nature in your spirit removed. And that happens when you are born again. When you are washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And this takes place in your spirit. Who is a sinner? Is the second code. Do you understand who a sinner, a sinner is? So from today, don't just call somebody a sinner because he has killed, a sinner because he has stolen, a sinner because he has fornicated. No. He did those things because there was a nature in him. The real sin is the nature in his spirit. Because until you understand what sin really is, you will never be able to appreciate what righteousness is. Because they are direct opposites of each other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To make the most out of this message, you need to become a child of God by receiving his life into your spirit. And this is easy. It is done by believing with all your heart that Jesus is the son of God raised from the dead and then confessing his lordship over your life. To do this, make this confession after me. 
Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. With all my heart, I believe you were raised from the dead. Jesus, I confess you now as the Lord over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit, and I declare that I'm born again. Hallelujah. If you have prayed this prayer with all your heart, you are born again. Do contact us, and we'll help you to grow in Christ. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055-792-7744. Follow Dr. David Bindan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bindan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today at megalightmission.com and have access to life-transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy. <laughs>